In this video, Pastor Chris addresses university and other college students. He teaches them what success is and that they must invest in themselves and make deposits in themselves to prepare themselves for a successful life and future. He teaches them that their success in life is their responsibility and not the responsibility of any government or institution. Now, take out your notebook and pen, listen attentively, and take notes, which you are going to go over again and again in your private time, so you can have reference material as you put this teaching to work for you and create a successful life for yourself. God bless you. First, let me define for you what success is. And I'll tell you why I define success this way. Number one, success is impacting the world with the investment of your personality. Now never forget this. I told you what I'm going to be sharing with you is something you would need the rest of your life. So it's important that you get this, get it down, write it down. And you can even get the tapes so you can listen again and again. As it's success, number one, Success is impacting the world with the investment of your personality. The investment of your personality. Impacting the world with the investment of your personality. T.L. Osborne said, work on being, not on having. With what you are, you will have. Don't work on having anything. Work on being something. Your personality. Invest in your personality. And you can impact the world with the investment of your personality. That is success. impacting the world not just walking through the world impacting the world with the investment of your personality so you're gonna have to do something to you there's so many who are crying out for a change of government a change in the government a change in the school and so on and so forth they are not your problem. We have to understand this. Of course I do understand when, when leaders can pose a sort of a problem. But generally speaking, I mean, if you, if you are intelligent enough to look at the whole world and look at so many things that have happened in the world and what people call for, the changes people call for, you'd realize that they only make those changes to get into a worse situation. They change one government and get a worse one. And they don't realize what the problem really is. You cannot blame any system for your failure. Because no system was designed for your personal failure. And I want to talk to you personally now. Think of you as an individual. You cannot blame a system for your personal failures. You cannot blame others, other people for your own failures. You must learn to hold yourself responsible. Hold yourself responsible. You have to determine to hold yourself responsible. When you say such and such a person is a responsible young man, a responsible young lady, what do you mean? You're talking about someone who can, who can be responsible for his actions or her actions. Learn to hold yourself responsible, not someone else. It doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in, it doesn't matter. You see, where we find ourselves in life is never the problem. It's what we do with the situation that matters.
It doesn't matter how you were born. It matters how you live the rest of your life. It doesn't matter how you were brought up by somebody else. Now you have arrived. What changes will you make? You're responsible for what you are today. Number two, success is influencing the world around you to think like you and aspire to your inspiration. I said that again. Success is influencing the world around you to think like you and to aspire to your inspiration. You become a success when you influence the world around you to think like you and to aspire to your inspiration you awaken others to think like you why because you've made the right investment into your personality you have built your personality you've got some good thinking some good ideas and now you move to the second level of influencing the world around you to think like you That is success. Motivate them to think like you. First, make a deposit in your personality. And then you can draw from that deposit. It's very simple. Some people blame America. And they say America wants to be the watchdog of the world. They want to dominate everybody. Oh yeah, because they have made an investment in themselves as a nation. And now they want everybody to think like them. But that is success. You make an investment in yourself. Not in things. In yourself. Success is in you. It's not measured by the things you have. Or you don't have. It's measured by your way of thinking, your thinking process. It's measured by the ideas you have, by the things you do, the words that come out of you. And when you have made that deposit, do you make that deposit? How do you make that deposit? Yes, by listening to the right things, by reading the right books, by opening your mind and thinking. We'll talk about thinking in a moment. Thinking, using your mind. Using your mind. Because one of the principles of success is to look out for a need and think of how to meet that need. You think differently. A lot of people who say, well, I cannot afford such and such a thing. I can't afford it. No, you don't think like that. Because when you say, I cannot afford it, what you have done is to resign. To failure your mind goes to sleep don't say I cannot afford it you ask how can I afford it there's a difference between the two there are lots of you here now you're working hard in school so that when you come out you can get a good job some of you were even advised by parents and our, our, our guardians to choose a course of study so that when you come out um, you can get a good job so that you'll be well paid and get good retirement benefits and all of that kind of th you know job security and so on and so forth you're from the wrong school you see and you're listening to those who also went to the wrong school life is not that way the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. There's a way that God wants his children to go. The Bible didn't say, train up a child in the way you want him to go. It didn't say, train up a child in the way he wants to go. He says, train up a child in the way he should go. How should he go? First and foremost, you have to understand the, 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 the character of God. The way he thinks. God is a great God. 
and then God spoke to Abraham one day he said he said Abraham I want to make you great God is a great God he makes great kids and so you want to you want to train up your child the first thing you think about is not how to get him to have an education so he can get a good job that's failure come on the first thing you try to make him understand is how to make the job to get it not to have a good job be employed by somebody to buy the job buy the company not to work for the company to get it create work you must sow the seeds of greatness failures produce failures success reproduces success so if you're, you're there trying to you know do so well so you can come out and then get a good job you are headed for the you're headed for the rocks can't you look around you don't you understand what life is all about can't you see it the two types of people the haves and the have-nots the greats and the smalls the rich and the poor there are no middle ground make no mistakes about it there's no such thing as average the so-called middle class does not exist it's a mirage the middle class is actually well decorated poor men Hey, come on there's too much responsibility for us to try to be poor yes, refuse to be poor <laughs> if you would use your mind there's so much inside Praise God. Amen. You have to have the right ideas. Catch the right dream. Think the right thoughts. And get ready for your world. See, there are people who live like they think the world owes them something. They think somebody owes them something. That's all, all the time they come out with placards and they're singing stupid songs. All we are saying, give us more this, give us more that. Who is to give to you? give us water we want the school to give us water we want the school to give us light give us this and give us that yet someone discovered the light yet someone yeah think about it what you're crying for to be given someone found it someone created it now you come like a beggar. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give Cause my name is Jimmy. <laughs> Tell somebody beside you, wake up. Yeah. Cause there's something inside you. Hallelujah. So I said number two success is influencing the world around you to think like you and to aspire to your inspiration make them think like you how come on build your thinking process come on think think big think big there's no there's no there's no punishment there's no penalty for thinking big there's no law against thinking big there's no commandment against thinking big God's not against thinking big 
He's only against you thinking bigger than so and so. I shouldn't think about being bigger than you, but I'm going to think about me being really, really big. <laughs> Hallelujah. God talks about permanent success. He says the paths of the righteous is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day. Not success for a time. See, you don't want your life to be used to. X used to be rich, used to be successful. I was, I was, I was, I was. What about today? I mean, look, look, look around you today. Look around the country today. Most parents are looking to their children to bury them out. They can even go as far as saying, oh, child, you know, you're the hope of the family. Because they know the family is in deep mess. But what is God's principle? What is God's will? God's will is for fathers to lay something down for the children. To lay wealth down for the children. But most parents are only hoping to get something from their children. Are you going to be that way when you grow up? Hey, come on one of the biggest blessings that parents give today let me tell you about it one of the biggest blessings that parents give today is may your children also do for you what you're doing for us <laughs> it's a good one it's a good one but it's not good enough you know why i tell you why it's not good enough see don't pack up in the same packing lot where your father packed up. Mm, mm. <laughs> I said, don't pack up in the same parking lot where your father packed up. Help your parents because they didn't hear what I'm telling you now. So you help them. Be nice and kind and helpful to them. Do all of that. But listen, dream big. When you get to be 60 or 70, don't retire to a rocking chair. Let all the big things that you stared up in your youth be working all around the world. Let your children grow up and inherit substance. Don't let them grow up trying to work to bail you out. Are you still there? <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Why are you in school? Are you in school for the right reason or the wrong reason? Well, some of you came here for the wrong reason, you know. Uh, you're actually beginning to find out you were here for the wrong reason. Now you're trying to find out the right reason. Thank God. Thank God. If you discover the right reason to be in school, thank God thank God the two types of education see even though you're in the same classroom you may not be having or getting the same kind of education that the other guy in the same class with you is getting let me tell you something the guy in class who's studying hard so he can come out with good grades He's studying hard no matter what he's studying, but he wants to come out with good grades so he can get a good job in XYZ company. And the other guy who is studying hard, whatever it is he's studying, he's in the same class, but he's studying hard so that when he comes out, he will buy up XYZ company. Do you think they're going to be studying the same thing? They cannot be studying the same thing. 
No, they will not be studying the same thing. I used to tell my classmates while I was in school, I would say to them, I'm 10 years ahead of you. I said that to them. I meant it. I said it to them. I would say, I'm 10 years ahead of you. See, because my thinking was different. My thinking was different. A lot of them looking at success around them, I was thinking about the whole world. I'm still that way today. I think about the world. The whole world. There's another guy who's thinking about being, uh, you know, he wants to become a representative of his locality somewhere, you know. Thank God for that. Somebody's got to do that job, but that's not going to be me. Because, you know, you know, if you can influence the world, the lesser is included in the greater. Tell somebody, think big. Think big. Listen, let me tell you something. No matter how you, you exercise your mind to have great ideas, no matter how you talk big, because anybody can do that, you see, no matter how positively you channel your thoughts without the miracle element, the supernatural element, the impossible will elude you. What do I mean by that? What men cannot do, you still will not be able to do. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. That's the power that puts you above others. That's the power that helps you do what men cannot do. It helps you see what men cannot see and hear what men cannot hear. There's where you are ahead of them because you hear words that are not available to them on this plane of life. You receive, you receive thoughts that they cannot receive. You see things that they cannot see on this plane of life. The power of the Holy Spirit. That's where the difference is. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll get to that. All right. Now, oh boy. I could preach these things I'm sharing with you. Each of these points I could preach for weeks. They're big. They're important. You know, I said success is influencing the world around you to think like you and aspire to your inspiration. Aspire to your inspiration boy aspire to your inspiration they wonder how did you get what you have what is your inspiration now they want to catch the same dream now they want to receive the same motivation now they want to get to the same to the same source the source of your dream the source of your life they aspire to your inspiration. Hey, what's making you think the way you think? What's making you do the things you do? What's making you say the words you say? Then you point them to Jesus. Hallelujah. For he's your inspiration. Glory to God. He's your inspiration. Oh, if you have Jesus, he's more than a man. He's more than a religious leader. Some people don't know who he is, but he's the creator of the world. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make.
Don't Stop Here, an inspirational and prophetic book that will open your eyes to see where you are in your spiritual journey, point you in the direction you ought to be headed, and show you how to get there. In Don't Stop Here, Pastor Chris takes you through Elijah and Elijah's journey from Gilgal to Jordan. You'll learn of God's concern over your spiritual growth and how he constantly wants to increase your spiritual knowledge and understanding. Hurry now and get your copies. To place your order, please call any of the numbers now showing on your screen or online at www.christembassy.org. Number three. Boy, I like it. Success is making the world around you better than how you met it. Yes, that is an inspiration. That is a new way of thinking. You come into a place and you are challenged by the difficulties you are challenged by the problems you are challenged by all that you see around you and you are motivated inspired to want to make the world better than the way you met it that is success God doesn't want failures God sponsors no flops he wants a success for a child because he is a success Success is making the world better than you met it. Make it better. The world around you. Make it better than the way you met it. Oh, glory to God. Those that come into your life, those that come into your world, make them better than the way you met them. Hallelujah. Michelangelo wanted a stone and the shopkeeper was wondering he said everybody has rejected that stone why do you want it michelangelo said i see an angel in the stone you see everybody has a potential of becoming a super being and when you look at people and you see them with all their dirt with all their stains with all their poverty their needs then you think what will he become if I got in contact with you, when I meet people, I change them. And that's what I'm doing to you right now. I'm setting a fire ablaze in your spirit. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm inspiring you with something. I'm challenging you to a cause. I'm letting you know there's something to fight for. Glory to God. There's a greater life. A greater life than receiving something from somebody else there's a greater life than asking for help there's a greater life instead of reaching out for help hey come on become a helper become a lifter is that what you're going to do in your life are you going to be a helper or are you going to be one reaching out and asking for forgiveness for your debts I don't know how to beg I hate begging I don't like to beg whether to beg for money or to beg for help I don't like to beg I don't like to come to the door late and beg you to please open for me Too many love begging. They beg everywhere. They beg to stay in the queue. They beg everywhere. They beg in the bank. They beg because they always do the wrong thing. They always come late. So they beg, they beg, and keep begging and begging, and the lives are full of begging. You should have more dignity than being reduced to a beggar. Stop begging.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Stop begging. All right, so what are you going to do? Two more points and then we'll close. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I said, make the world around you a better place than you met it. Make it better than how you met it. If you meet someone, make that person better than the way you met him. Are you hearing me? Some of you can go back home, make your home better than the way it was before. Hallelujah. Make it better. Even in class, you can begin practicing this from tonight. It be, you see, things about life are based on principles. So it's not really how large you do what you do that counts. It's the principle that's behind it that counts. Before we had the kind of meeting last night that you saw, we already had certain other meetings from where we learned certain principles that we put to work. It's those principles that are put in operation over a period of time that bring you to the place that you want to be at a particular point in time. Yes. Principles. For example, I said make the world around you better than how you met it. It begins, that's a principle. It begins with one person. What's the world around you? The world around you begins with the next door fellow, with your neighbor. That's the world around you. Can you make that person happier than he was yesterday? If you can put that principle to work, it's going to work in a global arena soon because it's a principle it's a principle if it works on one person it will work on ten if it works on ten people it will work on a thousand if it works on a thousand it will work on a million can you make that person better than you met him oh yes you can even your lecturers Instead of coming into the class and acting like they owe you something. You begin to show appreciation for whatever they teach you. The, the, the little time they spend with you becomes important to you. Do you know how to say thank you for little things that are done for you? Or you keep acting like they're owing you. Then you come out with your placards, all we are saying... You know what it is to be grateful? Successful people are grateful people. Failures are never grateful. Poor people are never grateful. And that's the reason they remain poor. See, when you see anybody whose poverty has continued over a long period of time, you have right in front of you an ungrateful person. Rich and successful people are grateful people. They are grateful people. Thank you is very, very quick in their mouths. Thank you. They know how to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You learn it. You practice it. Thank you. Thank you. Why? Because you believe it was a gift from them to you. Whatever they gave to you. Their time, their effort, their presence. Thank you. You don't think they owe you. Those who think the world owes them something are forever trying to find out who's owing them. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. No, don't act that way. The world doesn't owe you anything. You are the one that needs to put something into the world. Praise God. I think I've got something to give. I think that I can invest within me and look around and find someone to give something to. I think I ought to be big enough to become a giver because God is a giver. So, if God has kids, his kids should be givers. So, I'm a giver. And then you learn to give big 
big. And you know what? The principle is the more you give, the more you receive. The more you give, the more you receive. So you don't become receiving conscious, you become giving conscious. Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. If that's true, he's saying it is more honorable to give than to receive. You see the difference between the giver and the taker? The taker is not honorable. The giver is honorable. You see that? So when, that's why you're grateful because every time you meet someone who has given to you, you recognize honor. Because you're a man of honor. If you're a man of noble, uh, 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 of noble character, when you see others of such nobility, you recognize them. Kings know kings. So when, when someone does something for you, you know that that means he's a man of honor. That means he's, he's done something that's going to take him to the next level. You appreciate it. And you say, thank you. Because you notice that. Thank you. Wow, he's acting like a king. Thank you. Hallelujah. Do you think a lecturer deserves thank you? After he's paid, isn't it? He's paid, so he's doing his job, he's paid. What about the one who didn't come to class and he was still paid? You didn't do anything about it. He still got his money. Come on. Is it possible for you, after a lecture, to come out and, and catch the lecturer, you know, and he say, excuse me, sir. And he turns around. He thinks, here comes one of these dummies. Didn't understand what I told him in class. Now he wants to ask a question again. Yes. Sir, I just want to say thank you for the lecture. Boy, you break him down. Listen. Listen. You're a student, but you're a student with a difference. Are you hearing me? You're a student with a difference. You live by principles. Don't act like everybody else. Be different. You're not trying to get his good favor. You're just practicing the principles of success. You see, the one who can say thank you, who appreciates, is greater than the one who doesn't. And don't let anything stop you from being able to do that. Your mind will tell you, oh, you go, hey, what does it cost you? Say, I just want to say thank you. Uh, uh, is that all? Oh, yes, sir. He's amazed. He can't forget it for the rest of the day. Because he's still thinking he's not met people like you. Who can come and say thank you for the lecture? He might even be nasty. And say, oh, I was just doing my job. Don't worry. See, you're not doing it for his sake. You're doing it for your sake. Are you hearing me? You're not being good for another man. You're being good for yourself. Because by acting that way, you are peddling to the next level. You are moving to the next level. Learning to say thank you. Have you ever entered a taxi cab and you gave the man money and you also said thank you? No, you think, oh, I gave him money for it. No, say thank you. It's a principle. Start learning it. Start learning it. When you understand that, you'll see the difference between Mr. Failure and Mr. Success. I knew I would never be a failure. I knew I would never be poor. Several reasons. And this is one of them. Because I'm a grateful person. See, a grateful person is given the privilege of seeing what others don't see. When you're thankful, you are helped to see more. You remember the ten lepers that called on Jesus for help? Son of David, have mercy on us. They were all lepers. Son of David, have mercy on us. And then Jesus, he healed them. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they turned to go, 
They found out they had been healed. Only one turned back and ran to Jesus, fell on his face and said, Master, I'm healed. I want to thank you. Jesus said, there were ten of you. Where are the nine? You know what happened? This one that was healed, Jesus said, thy faith had made thee whole. Which means, what? See, leprosy takes away the extremities. They lose their toes, they lose their fingers, and so on and so forth. And for these lepers, they had lost something in their lives. Plus, what they lost in their bodies, they also lost money from trying to care of themselves. They lost, they lost their dignity. They had been sent out of home, sent away from society, ostracized. So they lost so much. And Jesus said, thy faith had made thee whole. So the man had something more than healing. When you get healed, the, the wound is healed, the pain is gone. But that doesn't mean that what you lost has come back. Except you are made whole. So what? By being grateful, this leper who was a Samaritan was made whole. He had other things restored to his life. The other nine were only healed. What a difference. Learn to be thankful. Learn to be grateful. It will put you above others. <laughs> Hallelujah. Finally, take this with you. So, what are you going to do? All right. Number one, catch the vision. Catch it. Catch the vision. We've talked about success. Now, catch the vision. Here's the vision of the ministry. Hey, catch the vision. Catch the vision. You say, I'm a member of Believer's Love World. Yes, but what is the vision? You've got to catch it. Who are we? What is our objective? What is our business? Hey, as a member of the ministry, what do you do? What is your job? What is, who are we? Why are we here? God said to us, take my divine presence to the peoples of the world, to the nations of the world. We're touching lives. We say, believers love world. Building a better world with love. A happier world with love. Was it Christ's embassy giving your life a meaning? I'm not trying to give my life a meaning. Don't misunderstand the vision of the ministry. I'm not trying to give my life a meaning. It didn't say Christ's embassy giving my life a meaning. It's Christ's embassy giving your life a meaning. My life has been given a meaning. My vision now is to give your life a meaning. So we are in the business of giving their lives a meaning. So we reach the unreached and tell the untold and lift the downtrodden and raise them up and give them new legs to walk, hope for the future, bread for today. Giving your life a meaning. Giving you a purpose for living. We help you to see life. Life is bigger than you see it in your village. Life is bigger than you see it in your father's house. Life is bigger. Hey, come on. There's a happier world out there. There's a happier life out there. They say, how? Everywhere is full of war. Everywhere is full of trouble. No, you create your life. And I'm in the business of helping you chart your course. I'm in the business of helping you find your feet. Hallelujah. I'm in the business of helping you discover the potentials in you. Helping you discover who you really are. I, want, I, I stand like a mirror and show you who you are. And I say, hello, you are not broken down. You are not destroyed. Look here. You are, you are a super being. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Catch the vision. Catch the vision. Turn people on. Turn them on. You've got what is called lifting power. Now, Holy Ghost power is lifting power. 
That's what Holy Ghost power is. It's lifting power. You've got it inside you. If you have the Holy Ghost, lifting power is inside you. Begin to lift people up. Begin to change their lives. Hallelujah. You know, when you see us lift people up, up from the, 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 the stretchers and wheelchairs, it's only symbolic. It's symbolic. Because life is more than, the, than, than getting somebody who could not walk to begin to walk. Life is more than helping somebody who couldn't see with his optical eyes to begin to see. All that is symbolic. When I get to a man who cannot walk and is sitting in a wheelchair and I say in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And I pull him up. I see something bigger than that. I see him coming out of his financial wheelchair. I see him coming out of his mental wheelchair. I see him coming out of his material wheelchair. There's a greater life. And that's our business. That's our job. To help them see what they ought to see. Hey, get an education. But you know what? Get an education with a difference. You understand? An education with a difference. Next time, as you study, study to become versatile. Study to understand things about life. Study, read, read. Not only for good grades. Get good grades, but go bigger than the good grades. See, learn things even your lecturers don't know. So get an education with a difference. You understand? Get an ed education with a difference. Listen to the guy who's vast in his field. Learn what he knows by listening to him teach. And then look beyond him. Get an education with a difference. Catch the vision. Tell somebody, catch the vision. <laughs> Number two, localize it. Oh boy. Localize it. When you catch the vision, then you localize it. What do you mean catch the vision and localize it? Hey, now I understand. The ministry's vision is giving your life a meaning. When I meet you, I give your life a meaning. Now localize it. That means I look beyond it being a vision of the ministry. I see it as my vision. And I'm producing results in my sphere of contact. Everywhere I am, everywhere I go. Now the vision is no longer the ministry's vision. The vision has become my vision. Localize it. Use it where you are. Practice it where you are. Turn the lives of others on around you. Tell somebody, localize it. You see, what we've come to do in Port Harcourt, do it in your school. Do it. Do it in your hostel. You see that? That's what you're going to do. Hold the biggest conferences. Hold the biggest meetings. Lastly. <laughs> I already gave it to you. It's called run with it. The Bible says, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he that read it may run. Run with it. How do you run with a vision? When you catch the vision and you localize it, you run with it. Oh boy. Oh boy. How do you run with it? Oh boy. It's called the Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost unction. That's the way you run with it. You become full of the Holy Ghost full of the Holy Ghost and when you become full of the Holy Ghost full of the Holy Ghost he begins to inspire you along the lines of that vision when you localize it he shows you the next step see because you're not going to just get stuck here I said to run with it means that after you have localized what you've got when you start from where you are the Holy Spirit inspires you to the next level. He inspires you to the next point. He inspires you to the next grade. He inspires you to the next field. 
now you are actually running with it from talking to two you begin to talk to 10 from talking to 10 you begin to talk to 100 from talking to 100 you begin to talk to 500 and then from 500 to a thousand from a thousand to two thousand and then to five thousand and to ten thousand and to a hundred thousand glory to god tell somebody run with it by the power of the holy ghost lift your hands and worship him glory to god worship him Worship him now. Praise him, praise him, praise him. You're running with it. Hallelujah. Catching the vision. You localize it, make it yours. Run with it. You're wrong with it. If you have been blessed by this message, like and share it so others can be blessed as well. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, in order to support our ministry of helping to get the gospel out to the peoples of the world. We are in the end times, and these are the very last days of the end times. There is now more urgency than ever before to get the gospel out. Please, share all messages published on this channel to as many people and groups as you possibly can. God bless you as you make yourself relevant in the end-time gospel field and the harvest of souls into God's kingdom.